and welcome back to the another episode of daily news analysis for IAS 2025. It is 11th August today and we are going to discuss these important five articles which are in the newspaper today. You know before we start our discussion uh, I would like to introduce you guys this channel. You know every day we upload two videos on this particular YouTube channel. One in the morning session which is the this video uh, in which we discuss the daily news analysis we discuss the most important articles which are relevant for your exam you know we try to break them into the simplest language possible so that it would be easy for you to understand those articles and take up the information from them and in the evening session we upload another video in which we discuss the daily uh, quiz session we discuss the questions related to the current affairs so that it will give you the idea how the questions may come from the current affairs also and it may help you revise your current affairs and we also discuss few questions from the previous year question book so that it will give you the proper idea how the questions do come in the exam and what can be the methods which we can learn and by which we can solve those questions and how what inform and the information we learn from those questions uh, and the inform information we get from those questions uh, we learn the knowledge we get from those questions is very important for your upcoming uh, exams so with this i would like to request you guys first to please do subscribe the channel and share it with your friends so that they may also get benefited from this initiative and also when you subscribe it gives us the energy to work more hard on it and provide you the best information possible now without any delay let's look at the topics which we have to discuss today the first one it is about the hidden dangers of irrational use of antibiotics on microbiome. We will discuss about the impact of the microbiome. We will discuss how does uh, uh, we will discuss about the antibiotics. How important are antibiotics for the human body? What can be the its what can be its impact when we overuse the, these antibiotics? How it impacts the drug resistance and how it impacts the microbiome. After that, we will discuss about this new, uh, new Saudi laws on the migrant workers. We will discuss its impact with respect to the uh, migrant workers in Saudi Arabia, uh, with respect to the women and with respect to India. After that, we have to discuss another article. It is related to the Sheikh Hasina's exit and its impact on India. How does Sheikh Hasina's exit from Bangladesh impacts India, our relationship with the Bangladesh and what India can do to restore those relations. Then we will discuss about the PMAU urban to give as they are going to give housing uh, finance. Uh, they are going to give house, housing. Uh, they are going to give housing finances more credit cushion. After that, we will discuss the last article uh, with respect to the glacial uh, lakes multiply in Himachal and Tibet region. What is the reason for that? How does climate change impact it? What it can lead to? So with this, let us start with our first article. discussion you know here we have to discuss about the hidden dangers of the irrational use of antibiotics on microbiome you know it is very really interesting topic if we try to understand the antibiotics itself you know they are called the miracle drugs because you know they are, are capable of curing many deadly infections but unfortunately we as the patients we as the people we are often misusing those drugs we are so habitual of using those drugs we even from even from any doctor's prescription without any doctor's prescription we tend to use these medication you know if we have small illness we have small irregularities with our health we go for these antibiotics for example if we feel little you know little dehydration we will go for uh, the uh, ofloxacin pz if we will have little tickle in our uh, uh, in our uh, throat we will go for azithromycin and if we will have little you know we have some if we feel small irregularities with our health we tend to go for the the extreme use of these uh, anti antibiotics this is very much unfortunate you know there then you know here we need to educate our people the, about the use of these antibiotics, about the impact of these antibiotics and how this can impact the microbiome, how it can lead to the micro, uh, you know, microbial resistance of these microorganisms. So now 
till now we understood that how the how antibiotics they are called miracle drugs how they had helped in uh, you know curing many deadly infections but the overuse of these antibiotics have severe and often overlooked, overlooked consequences for example antimicrobial resistance and also disruption in antibiotics uh, cause and also disruption in antibiotics they it cause it leads to the disruption in microbiome about microbiome we should know that a human body is home to a vast uh, and you know interesting vast uh, vast you know human body is uh, sorry human body is home to vast community of uh, microorganisms which are collectively known as the microbiome you know indicating for example fungi whether it would be bacteria whether, whether it would be viruses about it is said that about 38 trillion micro uh, microbial cells are hosted by human body so we can conclude that we are more microbial than humans we are and with respect to this we also have a gut microbiome which plays a crucial role in maintaining our health you know in our gut we have a biome there gut microbi microbiome where we have millions and trillions of um, microbial organisms where we have bacteria there who help us in uh, who help us in digestion who support the immune system and you know that helps in producing essential nutrients like vitamin k and uh, certain other vitamins of the vitamin b category and also protects us against the pathogens and also we should know that the diversity and balance of uh, these microbial commu communities are important for our well-being we need to balance them we need to protect them but unfortunately the irrational use of the antibiotics can destroy these microbiomes and antibiotics we should know that antibiotics when we take antibiotics the antibiotics don't discriminate between good microorganisms and bad microorganisms they are very much you know neutral to both they don't discriminate uh, on this and when they attack when these antibiotics attack they attack on the both whether it would be good micro uh, bacteria or my microbiome or it would be bad microbiome so it attacks uh, in this same in, in the very neutral way with respect to this there is a concept of dysbiosis you know first we should know what this is what this dysbiosis is and we have it is linked to many different uh, concepts in this topic uh, which was in the newspaper today here about dysbiosis it is the antibiotics wipe out large population of the gut bacteria you know the gut biome we have in our intestines you know when we take up the antibiotics uh, irregular, irregular use of those in antibiotics it leads to wipe out large population of the gut bacteria and by this uh, this is called the dysbiosis and it can cause more severe conditions like uh, flammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome you know it can also impact immune functioning about this the gut microbiome interacts with various organs through complex networks known as gut organ axes and the, the and these interactions influence the overall health of and functioning of the body you know this gut biome it leads to the gut organ axis it functions with the different organs of the body and you know these interactions influence the overall health and functioning of the body and we should also know that the gut there is a gut brain axis links the gut microbiome with the brain and you know uh, dysbiosis can alter neurotransmitter levels and brain brain chemistry affecting mood cognitions and mental health conditions like anxiety and depression you know if we have this uh, dysbiosis you know by the excessive use of the antibiotics these uh, microbiomes you know, are wiped out so because of that this leads to the the interaction between the gut biome the interaction between this uh biome gut biome and the brain uh, microbiome with the brain gets uh, affected and this can lead to this can alter the neurotransmitter levels and brain chemistry gets affected 
you know which leads to the mood swings uh, and you know mental health conditions like anxiety and depression and similarly we, there is a gut liver axis which can lead to the inflation of liver you know cirrhosis of liver uh, and also we have gut second axis which uh, which can lead to many skin conditions if it is not maintained well so these were a few impacts of how what are the dangers of rational use of the antibiotics on micro biome i hope i was able to make it clear to you guys i hope you know these concepts uh, it is very simple concept and you know it has very deeper knowledge in it i hope i was able to deliver it to you now let's uh, try to recap what we understood in this article dekho <coughs> पहली बात हमने इस आर्टिकल में ये अंडरस्टैंड किया है कि जो एंटीबायोटिक्स होते हैं इनको कहा जाता है कि दे आर द मोराइकल ड्रग्स बिकॉज दे आर एबल दे आर कैपेबल ऑफ फाइटिंग अगेंस्ट मनी डिजीज दे आर कैपेबल ऑफ क्योरिंग मनी डेडली डिजीज बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली जो हमारा हैबिट है लोगों का वी आर गेटिंग एक्सेस वी यूज दीज एंटीबायोटिक्स वेरी एक्सेसिवली without any medication without any prescription from doctors and because of that it leads it to plays a vital role in destroying in impacting our health in impacting the microbiome and also because of the overuse of these uh, uh, antibiotics it leads to the microbial resistance and also destroys the microbiome so this microbiome it, it is very important part of our body you know our body is home to trillions of microorganisms whether it would be viruses whether it would be fungi whether it would be it would be bacteria so these my these micro these contain the microbiome and you know we as a humans are more microbial than humans itself with respect to this we have another uh, a particular gut microbiome which plays a crucial role in maintaining our health for example it helps in digestion it helps it supports the immune system it produces essential nutrients like vitamin k and vitamin b and protects against pathogens and also the diversity and the balance of these microbial communities are important for our well being with respect to this when we you know when irrational use of antibiotics uh, are done it destroys this microbiome also antibiotics do not you should know that they do not discriminate on the basis of whether the the microorganisms are good or bad they have the very neutral and severe impact on them so it does affect this microbiome also and it leads to the dysbiosis and this dysbiosis it can cause more severe conditions like inflammatory bowel syndrome and uh, ib ibs uh, irritable bowel syndrome and can impact immune function then we further discuss it about these uh, gut organ axes like the the gut brain axis links the gut microbiome with the brain how it can impact uh, if there is any change in the gut microbiome how it can impact the functioning of the brain how we see the patient having such uh, conditions have the um, have the mood swings have you know anxiety and depression then also we see that there is a gut liver axis and gut skin axis and various other conditions which can be caused if this microbiome is impacted by these antibiotics so this was about this article so let's move to the next article it is about Saudi Arabia's new uh, new laws on migrant workers you know <coughs> about saudi arabia we should know that it is the world's largest recipient of migrant domestic workers that the saudi arabia is world's largest recipient of migrant domestic workers and you know if uh, uh, the condition of these workers in the gulf countries is very bad if you are very well aware of the movie recently released the gold life it you know it specifically you know shows how the life of those workers is there you know matlab ki jo saudi arabia ya baaki sab arab countries hai the condition for these workers is very very bad because the rules do not support them even if there are rules uh, the implementation of those rules is very 
heard. So with respect to this, we had this article here. It was in the Hindu newspaper. You know, right now the Saudi Arabia they are going to roll out new domestic laws in the September about the Saudi about Saudi Arabia more than three they have the more than three million migrant domestic workers and in this more than, in this three million domestic workers they have more than one million being women and also when we exclude this much of the workers from the labor laws it leaves huge gaps in protection as money for example as monitoring mechanisms such as labor inspections complete mechanism compliant uh, mechanisms at the way and the wage protection system do not apply to this sector and these you know when this much people are excluded from the labor laws so there are many things which they get which will the benefit of they should uh, benefit for example they will not be able to labor inspections on pay because they are not included in the labor laws and also who complaint and wage protection they did not enjoy this wage protection <coughs> and also the article in the hindu newspaper said that the current and the upcoming migrant domestic workers laws do not address these protection gaps sufficiently these Jobi laws other hai for example ki fala la hai ya ab jo laws aa rahe hai they did not matlab ke wo acche se mention nahi kar rahe hai these concerns of these migrant labor workers migrant domestic workers ab the question here is you know <coughs> it is very common aur agar hum dekhenge ye bahut hi understood cheez hai ki that the female the uh, female uh, uh, migrant uh, domestic workers they face extreme abuse at the hands of their employers within households and also by the officials when they seek any remedy so the women are highly uh, their rights are highly violated uh, violated there and you know they feel huge violation from the hands of their employers and also from those when they go for uh, anywhere else to seek the remedy for that they get violated and we should know one more thing about this the article mentioned further that these uh, you know migrant domestic workers are not only paid poorly but there are no clear calculations for uh, overtime though almost one of them are overworked matlab ki agar hum dekhenge matlab ki jo ye jo hai migrant domestic workers so they are unka jo pay hai they are paid very least for their work or they don't have any provisions of working overtime kyunki wo already bahut time tak kaam karte rehte hain and they don't have those matlab ke provisions ke ab iske ilawa jab kaam karoge that would be overtime work and they will be paid according to that they don't have that much seen right now and also now who are these migrant uh, domestic workers this is very important to understand that that they are the empl uh, employer they are employed by individuals to render services in their households for example household kaam ke liye wo individuals ne inko hire kiya ja kiya hota hai ki wo unka kaam kare the combination of exclusion from labor laws and the strangled stranglehold of the kafala system result in the employers having absolute control over domestic workers मतलब कि जब कोई लेबर ला नहीं हो और जो कफाला सिस्टम चल रहा था वहां पे उसकी वजह से क्या होता है जो एम्प्लॉयर्स दे सी देम एज देर स्लेव एंड दे हैव एब्सोल्यूट कंट्रोल ओवर दीज डोमेस्टिक वर्कर्स नाउ व्हाट इज दिस हाउ डज द कफाला सिस्टम वर्क ये क्या होता है इट इज लाइक अ बॉन्डेड लेबर यू नो दे हैव टू वर्क हाउस होल्ड वर्क दे पे जो बेस स्किल रहता है टू थाउजेंड टू फाइव थाउजेंड डॉलर month and also they have brought the workers you know jo employers so they, they see that they had brought the workers instead of seeing it as payment for service so this is how the kafala service workers workers and how it has uh, helped in matlab ke more uh, dehumanize karne mein in the uh, labor in a labor so in domestic migrant domestic workers ko those workers who are working in the household now let's look at the new um, uh, migrant domestic workers laws or whether they are the better here we have 
in in these laws there are few provisions for example for example maximum of 10 working hours a day you know it has given the maximum time how much time a person can work second there is weekly off day also uh, usually on fridays then third prohibition of confiscation of identity documents by the owners by the uh, recruiters they cannot uh, you know confiscate the identity documents of the particular person also workers have the right to terminate the contract you know those who are working they have this right they can terminate this contract anytime and also they have been granted one month paid leave and employees must pay for the annual tickets home you know annual annually when they go to their home the employees have to pay this ticket to them and these you know these provisions seem very much just if we look at these provisions 10 working hours you know prohibition of confiscation of identity documents you know the, the major concerns of these people are witnessed here but the question here is the problem is about the persist uh, uh, the problem is about you know implementing them and uh, you know Sudhis have the poor record of implementing especially when it comes to protect the rights of the migrant workers they this implementation of these rules is very hard there and this is one of the major concerns in there you know about India now let's look at the, what is the status of India's you know, migrant domestic workers in the Saudi Arabia we have 26.5 lakh Indians uh, constitute the single largest migrant population in the kingdom and among them largely are drivers and some are in the other categories also so this was about this article this is how what we can learn from it you know what are these migrant workers what are the new laws uh, which what are the new amendments new laws which were brought with respect to the migrant domestic workers what are the what were the existing laws how much they contribute to the Saudi kingdom itself how you know what is the uh, how what is the number of the women in there and what are the conditions uh, they are facing there and what how can it impact the economy of the country and how what can the government do with respect to that you know we can talk with the uh, so the officials we we have the better relation with them right now and we can talk with them with respect to our particular interests so with this we let's move to the article here it talks about the how will Sheikh Hasina's exit impact India you know we had discussed this topic many times let now let's give it a final region final look to this you know Sheikh Hasina she came into the office in 2009 and before Sheikh Hasina, we have Khalid Azia there. Her relationship with India was not good. She was pro Pakistani, pro China, and there during her tenure, there was anti India sentiments going on. After the Sheikh Hasina came into the office, she returned in the office in 2009. She did many tremendous jobs with respect to the, their nation and with respect to India itself she had you know she had done huge things for example she cared, she she you know she forged strong ties with the delhi she did the nationwide crackdown to shut down terror camps uh, in their state she campaigned against religious uh, you know uh, radicalization and also India demanded 20 most wanted men accused of terrorism and she sent them to India. So she worked very well with India. Her, her relationship with India was very well and in trade also trade and commerce we see how the trade developed and also how human development index of the, that particular country developed during her reign. But also every coil has two sides. You know, she had uh, some bad, you know, she has some dictatorship, uh, you know, issues also. She did some amendments to her the constitution, which were not, you know, suppose, which were not supported, you know, which, uh, which the democracies like India will never support such things. So, in overall, in, in simpler terms, our condition, our, our relationship with Sheikh Hasina was tremendous. But unfortunately, her government got toppled down. She resigned, and now there are more chances that after Yunus, who is the present 
interim uh, PM there after you know the Khalid Zia will return and you know how her tenure was we know that already and there are some concerns now the question is is India able is India capable to have the same relationship with Khalid Zia's government or with the next government as we had with the Sheikh Hasina's government so there are some challenges definitely there are some challenges you know as we discussed in Sheikh Hasina's time we had developed our relations to the next level we were more friendly countries you know we had least disputes and you know even though the disputes we have we try to settle them with the dialogues and also how Sheikh Hasina she ended border dis border tensions caused by the illegal migrants coming to India you know she she helped India in many ways and India helped her in many ways but the question here arises now can New Delhi for similar ties with the new government here as we know that New Delhi uh, India has shown that it continues to it continues to engage the the interim government and any future elected government in Dhaka you know we are in a you know our policy is not something like that of other countries our policy would always remain same irrespective of the government which we are working with so our approach would be same towards them also okay hum jo hamari relationship hasina ke sata we will try to have same relationship with the current government and the elected government which is going to be elected in that state so Hamari approach me koi change nahi aayi but it depends upon how they will take it whether they will be friendly as the Sheikh Hasina was or they will tend to move towards Pakistan and uh, and uh, China you know right right now India is fighting multiple threats India is fighting proxy war in Jammu and Kashmir India is fighting border issues with China and right now we cannot you know tolerate another Pakistan in our east so we are trying we have to try we have to do whatever is possible with us to restore our relations with Bangladesh to whichever the government is there you know we don't have to separate the hate we have you know you would have seen how the hate has started to spread against the Bangladesh because we are seeing these minority news issues in the news itself and it it has started to spread all over the country and we cannot uh, tolerate it like that we cannot you know we had the example of Maldives how we mishandled the situation of Maldives we cannot mishandle the situation of Bangladesh right now well, we have to focus on this we have to uh, you know deal with this very wisely uh, to me we should go for the big brothers policy you know we have to be better with them our policy should be same as what we were with the Sheikh Hasina there should be the trust issue there and we cannot in simpler terms we cannot uh, uh, afford uh, Bangladesh's loss if it tends to move towards China and Pakistan also you know the when we had been we are trying to engage with them as there was the uh, severing ceremony of the new interim government led by the Muhammad Yunus the top Indian High Commissioner was there in Dhaka he attended that and also there are some concerns with respect to uh, this relationship also right now the Miss Hasina she is uh, in, she is in uh, right now in our country she is in India and it is she, it is seen as a suspicion in Dhaka you know Dhaka is not liking it and also if the new government is formed what if they start to claim from India that they want Sheikh Hasina back then the real tension will start so there are some concerns and also if the Khalid Azia's regime wins then the situation how that plays will be also one of the concern so these are some issues which we have to look into with respect to the Sheikh Hasina's exit now moving to the another article it is about the PMAY urban 2.0 they are planning to give housing financers more credit cushion this is the second addition to the flagship Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban. You know, this is the second edition of this flagship program, Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban. You know, it aims to address housing shortage among the urban poor and provide more cushion to financiers and investors who provide credit facilities to the economically weaker sections and lower income groups. You know, in this scheme, the government has increased the corpus of credit linked uh, credit risk guarantee fund 
trust under the scheme from 1000 crore to the 3000 crore also further the management of the fund will be transferred to the national credit guarantee uh, company from the national housing bank so this is about to provide more in this scheme they are going to provide more cushion to the financiers and investors who invest in the weaker sections and the lower income sections in the infrastructure se section in developing the houses for the poor who cannot afford to develop the houses. So this was about this article. Now let's move to the next article of today's discussion. It is about the glacial lakes uh, multiply in Himachal Pradesh and Tibet. So if we look at this, uh, the heading, you know, here, it is the heading is very confusing because if we will see the glacial lakes are increasing for a layman it is good because more water would be available but if you had basic knowledge of environment then it is very much concerning you know why these lakes are increasing because the glaciers are melting and why these glaciers are melting because of the uneven environmental change and this has definitely impact on the earth itself impact on the infrastructure impact on the ecosystem there and also the we know that the himachal pradesh and the they are uh, on the higher altitudes and when these multiple lakes are formed it can definitely damage the lives and infrastructure it can lead to the continuous floods and you know damage of the infrastructure and it can lead to the death of many people you know what why there are now let's look at the article why there are so many multiple lakes forming in himachal pradesh because of the changed weather pattern you know we had discussed in our uh, one of our session in last month that in himachal pradesh we had seen a different changing weather pattern in the usually the uh, you know jo, usually the snow season was uh, uh, december and jan but it has changed to february and march and because of that uh, if the snow is in december and jan it will stay for a longer time it will it will lead to the glacier formation jada time tak rahega but if this snow falls in the uh, later winter or early summer this uh, then uh, it will melt within few days itself and it will lead to these formation of lakes and you know it can lead to the floods or uska jo bada impact rahega in the later summers the water availability of the water would be very less so we had seen the changing weather patterns in the himachal pradesh and its impact so one of its impact is this glacial lakes multiply you know it can uh, the rise in more in dammed lakes in himachal pradesh and trans himalayan region of tibet it is you know <coughs> it is a threat to the human life and infrastructure also glacial lakes in the satluj river uh, you know catchment area has almost doubled according to the center on climate change of himachal pradesh council of for science technology and environment according to them this uh, you know uh, glacial lakes in Salto River catchment area has almost doubled and also number of glacial lakes has been gradually increasing and with this we should know that the frequency of smaller lakes had increased more and because of that there, is, there are more uh, downstream dangers that when the water comes down it leads to the floods and there are dangers of floods and it can destroy many households and it can destroy many infrastructure in the particular area so right now it is the concern for the government it is uh, you know early mitigation should be taken care of you know the government should take care of this uh, matter very so early as possible you know they should form the canals and there should be good infrastructure availability there so that these issues can be avoided so with this we complete today's discussion i hope you would like the video i hope you would share it with your friends and you will definitely subscribe the channel thank you for staying with me thank you very much